down. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. they got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Newton to Olsen there for a Carolina first down. We've been together a little while now, partner. How often do we actually describe tight ends as nifty? Because that's what I think of when I see Greg Olson on the field. His ability to run routes, create space and separation, and make those catches downfield. Sure. And that's going to be caught by Funches for a Carolina touchdown. Devin Funches with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Panthers are able to grow their lead. Still first quarter, two receiving touchdowns for him. How are they going to slow him down? I think they're thinking about altering their game plan. Whatever they came in with, now maybe you switch a better cover guy to him. Or you make sure you have more people in his general area, wherever he lines up, to at least try and discourage them from throwing the ball to him. Five plays there on that drive. And the end result, a Panthers touchdown. Gano out to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. But before the possession switches here, I had written down that I wanted to talk about some of the awards this past season in the NFL. We know Brady was the MVP, but Todd Gurley, Offensive Player of the Year. How about that for a bounce back? Many were questioning whether he'd had a sophomore slump the season before. Didn't even get to 1,000 yards. Was a dominant force in 2017. How about his teammate Aaron Donald on yeah. the defensive side? He took home Defensive Player of the Year award. Yeah, very impressive. They had both sides of the ball. Sean McVay deserving, I think you would agree, of Coach of the Year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what he did for the Rams when they went from last in the league in scoring to leading the league in scoring and winning a division title. And how about the New Orleans Saints? Rookie of the year, offense and defense. Alvin Kamara on offense, Marshawn Lattimore on defense. Another carry now for Gurley. And Gurley fumbled it. Gurley fumbles the football. It's loose. And he'll take this back down inside the 20. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. Didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, just get credit to where it belongs. And he's got it. Touchdown, Panthers. And a great example there of just getting the feet in in a tough spot. It seems like every year these guys get better at this. Well, I think the drills get better, but they work on training camp, off-season work, OTAs. But also, a lot of these guys have dance backgrounds, ballet backgrounds, and they take that and carry it over to the football field. Gano for the extra point. It's good, and they stretch their lead to 28-0 now. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. Gano out to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. I want to give a hat tip real quick, Charles, to J.J. Watt before the possession switches here. Walter Payton, NFL Man of the Year. They totaled up how much he helped raise for hurricane relief, $37 million. Incredible. Hurricane Harvey, which really hit the Houston area in a big way, and his original goal was $200,000. So <laughs> congratulations to J.J. Watt and all the people who participated. And Greg Olson of the Panthers, Benjamin Watson of the Ravens, both tight ends also nominated and finalist for the most prestigious award as determined by the NFL, the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game, maybe establish the run? I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one, and what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football, let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. And able to 
get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter, and a lot of teams would just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. Getting had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. And before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. They've got a third down and five to start things out. From the gun, here's gone. And he's going to go down. They sack him back at the 42. How about that one? The so-called little guys putting the pressure on. That was a strong safety. When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone. Before the offense changes hands here, let's look back at the Super Bowl February 5th. What a game. I know you were there calling it offensively, though. Impressive on both sides. It certainly was, and let's face it, if you're in Minnesota, it's cold outside, but you talk about the offenses, they heated up in a big way. And how about Nick Foles? The backup quarterback turned MVP. 373 yards, three touchdowns, and of course, the big one receiving on the Philly special. Quite a story. And as you and I were talking about off-air, it was just a fluid game. Not a lot of penalties, just really clean play. Exactly. Exactly the type of game the NFL needed for the audiences at home watching the game and, of course, people in attendance. A really well-played game. And that one is incomplete. He just dropped it. But they're up big on the scoreboard, so maybe he can chuckle about later. So many offenses want to include their running backs into their passing offense and be able to swing the ball out and check it down to them. But sometimes those guys are just not as comfortable catching the ball as they are running it. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. That one goes for 36 yards. We often, with Cam Newton, talk a lot about his legs. Don't forget about that arm. He can throw it on a rope. He can loft it. He's got the touch that's been developed throughout his career. But the big part about just watching him throw it, it seems almost effortless. They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. A really nice gain of 25 yards. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? <laughs> and Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. Yeah, really turned it loose, didn't he? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Throw left side complete. That's Shepard. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Throwing on third down, Newton. This will be caught just inside the 10. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And now do you continue the drive, which is the... And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. 
Greg Olson from eight yards out. And the Panthers have got it on cruise control. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. So an eight-play drive covering 80 yards. And Carolina scores to cap it off. Gano out to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut it. Right. <laughs> and he's going to be wrapped up and driven down. Julius Peppers in there to sack him for a loss of six. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. To throw on second down is gone. Oh, it was hit at the line of scrimmage and intercepted. Picked off at the 15. Charles, there's something special about one of those big D linemen bringing it in off the tip there. Really nice coordination. Very much so. And I think what we've seen, and I'm going to put it in about the last five years, maybe a little bit longer, the coach is placing a bigger emphasis on ball drills. He's got it for a Panther touchdown. Devin Funches on his way to a monster game. Three first-half touchdowns. And the Panthers just continue to pour it on. So not only is that his third touchdown catch of the game, he's done it here in the first half. I'm not sure defensively what they're going to come up with to slow him down because already we're seeing him run past over through guys in order to make these catches and being able to try and shut him down at this stage of the game it's going to take a lot of effort so maybe it'll open things up for some other people well they better figure something out and soon after reviewing the play the ruling on the field is reversed They go play action with Stewart. Now Newton. This is caught. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. And yes, they want the points, so they will decline the penalty. No question there. You don't think they spent a couple seconds mulling over what the penalty was? I don't would even do know why they asked the sideline. Not at all. When you put the ball in the end zone on a takeaway, take the points and keep moving. And the route is on here in this first half. A nice, tidy little drive there, getting the ball in excellent field position and only one play to score it. Gano out to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. 
And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. Getting set to go again here on offense, Jared Goff trots back onto the field. In the second quarter, they're down big already. He's struggling as well. They've got to find something here. He's got to find something on this drive. And sometimes you take on all that extra pressure on yourself, and maybe you have to disperse it a little bit. Lean on some other people. Lean on your teammates. Find someone who can take the pressure off and get the ball in their hands for a while. Or this, if he doesn't, this is getting out of hand, or it could get worse. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. Wasn't able to get anything, no gain. Fumbled once already. Maybe he's being a little careful. Not necessarily on that play, but I'm sure that's in his mind somewhere. Oh, without a doubt, because protecting the football is job one for anyone who's carrying it. And that's exactly what he tried to do on that play, but it didn't gain him any yardage. Up back at the 16-yard line. We just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game. Really at the point of attack, the offensive line is just getting pushed around. I think now as a play caller, you've got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe you keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking. But you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. Thomas Davis. He's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. That's pulled in at the 32. And a second spin. Great blocking on the return. It springs him for 25. And the Panthers will take over in terrific field position. The veteran backup Anderson, his first throw. He's going to go deep. And this is taken in at the five. They give him a gain of 38. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back with more from Charlotte after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will have the highlights and analysis of this first half from our studios in Orlando. And I have a fairly solid idea about which team will be featured prominently in those highlights. <laughs> Might be a little bias. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. To throw is Anderson, operating from the gun, and nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but it does get away at its second down. Not only did they drop but look like an interception in the end zone, they blew a golden opportunity to shift the momentum. Stewart is the lone setback. Anderson. And he's got it. Touchdown, Panthers. Devin Funches on his way to a historic performance. Four first-half touchdowns. And the Panthers have got it on cruise control. And let's count them up now. One, two, three, four touchdown receptions for him in this game. And just one shy of the NFL record. What a great performance. Going up and catching the football, creating space, and finding the end zone. That's what it's all about. The drive there only spanning three plays. And the end result, a Panthers touchdown. Gano out to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Getting set to go again here, Robert Woods marches back onto the field. You better believe that he's well aware he has zero catches right now, and they're losing, so he's probably a little hungry. And you know the guys on defense are aware as well, and they're really excited that he has no catches, but they're also worried because a lot of times that's like the ticking time bomb. The longer you hold him down, when he finally explodes, look out. Yeah, no catches, though so far in this game. 
They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. And he loses the football a second time. And it's picked up by the Panthers. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not only gonna tip it, I'm gonna doff my cap to him. Congratulations, big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. And caught left side, Olsen. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. Sideline throw. It's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. I know they don't like to hear it when they get to a certain age. But then you have to start to use your, your skills, your wiles, right? Your mind to beat guys to the football and getting your toes. And he takes it into the end zone for a Panthers touchdown. Jonathan Stewart, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Panthers just continue to pour it on. We know that the big guys won't get the credit, Brandon, but we also know that that touchdown belongs to them. Excellent job of clearing the way for their running back. And the route is on here in this first half. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it's capped off by a Jonathan Stewart run. Gano out to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. The Rams offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go around. A big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over, the other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Well, they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. And he gets this one all the way up to the 40. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Now golf on first down. Dumps it off to Gurley. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. On second down, here's Goff. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. That throw good for only a couple and brings up third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Goff wants to throw on third and one. And this is going to be incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. They haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. That'll be out of bounds, and how good was that? They'll say the three-yard line. That's where they spot it. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try to... And he is not going to get away. The rush was too strong, and this is going to wind up a safety. Well, I think you can go ahead and give your punter an assist on that one. Pinned him deep, and the defense comes through with two points. You're exactly right, partner. This was all set up by a great punt. And if the ball goes in the end zone, this never happens. So great call. Give the punt team and the punter some love. So a free kick situation forthcoming from the 20 as they'll punt this one away. Take it at the 37. 
And that's the kind of return you're looking for. To get to that spot on the field, that allows you to do a lot of things on offense. down and he'll be brought down right at the 45 yard line now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime a shotgun snap for gone and he will find his man on the end route complete and he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks Goff fighting fellow second-year man Higby for a Rams first down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six-foot-six-inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six-six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. So it's halftime here in Charlotte with the Panthers out on top. As we'll send you down the coast to Orlando where we check in with our friend Larry Ridley and the EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Okay, Brandon, thanks. And welcome, everyone, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get to the highlights. The Panthers are simply running the show in the first half. They control the game and are way out in front. The Rams have an uphill battle in front of them. We'll try to claw back in this one. All right, let's get it going. Here's the first half highlights. Zerline's going to kick it away. The return will start from the 49. And nobody can stop him on this long touchdown. Now first and 10. Funches has got the catch here. He gone as he sprints to the end zone. That puts them on top by 14. is taken at the 16. Here we get a quick pass and completion, and it's caught for the touchdown. Panthers lead ballooning to 21. Following the forced fumble, Newton's looking to the end zone here, and he finds his mark for the score. Panthers push the lead to 28. Panthers line up at the 8. Newton's got the completion from the gun. And he caps off the seven-play drive with a score. Panthers in control. Offense on the field now after the pick. Funches is able to get open here. And this play will go for six. The blowout rolls on. Panthers take over late in the second. Funches is found on the quick pass and catched it. And this two-play drive goes for a touchdown. The blowout rolls on. Offense out now after the fumble. Stewart is going to stay up the middle. And this two-play drive goes for a TD as they continue to dominate. Still late stages of the second. Goff's got a completion middle of the field. And he'll be tackled at the 41-yard line. second half with Brandon and Charles. Gents. Gano out to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a real, I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Here's gone. He almost had it. The big D lineman nearly had an interception. Instead, it falls down incomplete. 
Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. And that is incomplete. Well, no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. Fielded at the 20. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at him turn. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And he's into the clear. Touchdown. certainly feels like that kind of game, doesn't it? No matter what they do, it's going to work. That might be the absolute crusher right there. A punt return for a touchdown. Feels like there's been a lot of crushers in this game. This lead just gets bigger. Gano now to add the extra point. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. We know he has home run hitting ability in the punt return department, and he showcases it there all the way back for six. So after surrendering the punt return for a score, let's see what they can do in turn on this kickoff. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. <laughs> and he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. He got 29 yards that time. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. With the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today, they've got to think about changing up their play calling. Some screens, some draws, some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game. And oh my goodness, he loses it again. And the Panthers have recovered. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around. And we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. And he's brought down after a good game. 23 yards on the play. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. I guess they figure with a guy who is that hot downfield, who knows how to get the ball into the end zone, you throw it up and give him every opportunity, even though that one fell into play. Yeah, he's already been in the end zone multiple times. Tried to target him again deep there, but unsuccessful. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. He's going to rifle one deep left side. He's got it for a Panther touchdown. A 
great play there. 46 yards. And the Panthers have got it on cruise control. And it was a tight window. He knew he had to rocket that thing in there. He got it done. And when you're able to complete one like that, your confidence has to just go sky high. You just mentioned it. Tight window. Zings it in there despite excellent coverage. Result, touchdown. Just a four-play drive that time. And Carolina scores to cap it off. Gano out to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. And the Rams getting set to go now. And last time the turnover on the fumble. And they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard. Had a drive going, had pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they felt like they were in striking distance. To come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? And it work his way across the 30 to the 32. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, Seven yards on first down. That fits the bill. Again, they run with Gurley. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards. And it'll bring up a third and two more. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, it's hard to get them started again occasionally. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. They tried to run right into the teeth of the defense on third down, but... Uh, Looked like those teeth were pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> they were having absolutely none of it stuffed him for a loss. Yeah, couldn't get any leverage up front and move people aside in order to run the ball. That's fielded at the eight-yard line. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. Carolina getting set to take the field. And last time out, another touchdown. And I think there may be some empty seats around here by the time the fourth quarter comes around. Yeah, I have to agree with you because this one's just about decided. But you know who benefits from all the... And got his man complete. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. They give him a gain of 37. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz, made the appropriate calls. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback right in the face of him puts him down. Anderson to throw on second down. He's going to rifle one deep, and that's caught inside the 30. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And that one results in 35 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of... And he will take it across for Panthers' touchdown. Jonathan Stewart, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Panthers just continue to pour it on. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. Gano out to kick this one away. 
That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. I know that everyone's going crazy. And Gurley here fumbled it. Gurley fumbles the football. It's loose. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. All I can say about this play is that someone's living right. I mean, he's trying to gain the artist, trying to get upfield. Ball comes free. What's that panic that we've talked about oftentimes that you feel? And we're back now in Charlotte. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Out of the gun. Gone. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm. Well, it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. And they pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. On is the punter, Hecker, as he gets this one away. He'll field this at the five. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the Panthers will take over now first and ten. Here come the Panthers now, set to take over on offense. And Charles, in a very one-sided affair, I think we've reached the point in the broadcast where you and I, <laughs> we may have some filling to do, right? Yeah, I think you're right about that because we got to try to keep people around. We don't want them to change the channels. Is that Ben Ramsauer? Are you hearing from Ben on the headset here? Tell yeah. us, stretch, stretch. this thing out a little bit. Get some talking points, dig them all out. Uh, that's what you get, a big-time producer. Keep them here. Brand is all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lenta. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> Throwing again on second and 10. Gilbert, he's going to go deep for four. And that's caught inside the 30. And he will take it across for Panthers touchdown. Devin Funches, 70 yards. And the Panthers have got it on cruise control. So another score there. Often you talk about the three phases of the game. Defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game. And privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching. And he'll tell the ownership that as he tries to negotiate a new contract off of this win. So they are looking strong here in the fourth quarter. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. And pressure comes in. He's brought down. It's a Panther sack. Julius Peppers in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks. And Gurley here fumbled it. Gurley fumbles the football. It's loose. Wow. That ball gets knocked free. But a teammate comes along and scoops it up. 
almost like it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Back to throw. Gone. And he goes down. It's a sack. They get him back at his own three-yard line. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. And he's able to get it out of there, and this is a pretty good kick. And it's fielded at the 34. Oh, he will not go down. Have to retake those ankles. A terrific return there, 27 yards all told. And this offense, they're going to have excellent field position. They take over with a first and 10 on the short side of the field. Carolina getting set to take the field. They've really distanced themselves. They have put the pedal to the metal, I guess, so to speak. So definitely have them in the rearview mirror, don't they? I mean, you're exactly right. Being able to string together these drives that end up in points, it's almost like a run in basketball to create that distance, and they're on a really big time one right now. It becomes contagious, doesn't it? It absolutely does, because oftentimes it translates to your defense as well, because they're excited about getting the ball back for their offense that's playing so well. Well, they are clicking right now. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 18 yards there, down two to 18, and a first down. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. On first and 10, Gilbert, his throw caught at about the five. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. And now you've hit that stage of the game, partner, where one of our predecessors, one of the great commentators of all time, he's to sing in this situation when this game appeared to be over. I know the fat lady's been singing for some no, time. No, 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 not her at all. This but one of she's our guys. singing too. Oh, no, she's singing. She, yeah, she's at least, she's on like the fifth tune. At yeah, this point. She, she left scales way behind. But he's just saying something about turning out the lights. The party was over. Gano out to kick this one away. It's a short kick, taking it to 15. And they're going to strike this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. And the Rams now coming out on the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with them punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Goff now looking to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Shaq Thompson in there with pressure yet again. And that's the seventh time they've dropped him here this afternoon. Time for a break. This one all over but the shouting. We'll finish it after this. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. Now Goff. And this is going to be incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. He gets this away as he'll wisely, I'd say, angle this to the sideline. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. Now the Panthers offense, they get set to come back onto the field. They have the big lead here late. They protected their home turf well, didn't they? They certainly did, partner. And just think about how good that feels because every team has a goal when they start the year to win at home. All right, and sometimes you don't win all of them, but they managed to get that done today. Just think about your routine stays the same. Everything's familiar. You feel right going into the game, and they translated that into a win. They did indeed. They protected the home field, and now the final stages. 
Well, they've done a good job on these receivers. Pretty much held them in check. They're a little too close for comfort. And you're always looking for a play to get you going, right? You're looking for someone to make one. But maybe this penalty, this pass interference call, that can help shake them loose. That one looks like he'll throw here. Airing it out for Olsen. He's got a man complete. Give him 30 yards there. What a throw right there for the first down. He has taken some real punishment in this game, but still standing in the pocket completing that one. He's a flat-out warrior. There's no question about that. How about him stepping up into the teeth of the rush and delivering there for that big strike and that big pickup? Throwing on first down. Gilbert. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. Shifts free at the 15. And, and he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. There's no doubt in my mind. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? It, it, it's not scales, right? I don't hear scales. Do I actually hear a tune I being warbled? I think the fat lady's humming. Yeah, she's doing more than humming. She's she dumbed it out she's right going. now. She's full bore. Yeah, this thing is flat out finished. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. Oh, I think the Panthers have got it. They did. Carolina football. Well, there you go. Just your everyday leading big and the onside kick it with a lead. They got it. I mean, it worked, but interesting call. I think because they have such a margin, they feel a little bit bolder about what they're doing. And it's not only just to try and increase their lead, but that's their way of saying we're in full control of this game and we can kind of do what we want. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. A very solid gain of 27. Well, go ahead and throw the ball, man. You've got the big lead. you got the clock on your side. Obviously, they don't care much about the feelings of the other team, do they? Well, I was going to say, you better run to the locker room pretty quick after this one. But right now, maybe they're just looking at it from the fantasy perspective. More points for everyone if they win big. And past the 30, down to about the 27. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size... This intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. And to me, that touchdown allows you to start grinning widely on your sideline. I think they pretty much locked this one away. Yeah, that's the clincher, the proverbial icing on the cake, if you will. Gano for the extra point. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. So that drive, four plays, and it's capped off by a Jonathan Stewart run. Gano out to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Yeah, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start the drive from the 25. Here's the Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. They are just obviously getting shellacked here in this one, Charles. What's, what's the message if you're a coach for this final drive in a lopsided game like this? For a lot of coaches, be honest. <laughs> don't forget today. Don't forget what has happened out here. Yeah, use that as ammo exactly. going Exactly. Take a great look at that scoreboard. Realize how poorly everything went for us. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And it's picked up by the Panthers. And he will bring it back to the four-yard line. And with that kind of a deficit, you can't afford to make any kind of mistakes. 
But it's been pretty symptomatic of what we've seen all game with them, isn't it? Down, say, down this big in the fourth Yeah, you'd quarter. say an afternoon to forget, absolutely. Now a 10th carry for Jonathan Stewart. And he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. Well, I've got a laugh here, and I really don't want to because the old school in me is not happy about this score this late, not necessary. But this is Madden, isn't it? Yeah. This, is how, this is how it works. Rub it in. Have a day. I mean, what, what does it matter? <laughs> These guys who are playing in this game, there are no feelings Exactly. There. They don't have to face the guy. Well, they might if they're in the same room going head to head. But, <laughs> but that's the about virtual it. guys on the screen don't have to face each other after this one. But in that case, run it up. Gano out to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Here's the Panthers' defense as they get set to go again. They've had a great game. They have given this offense fits all game long. But plenty to review, plenty to enjoy. How about the highlights that's going to happen out of this one? Big plays all around. A really well-played game on the defensive side of the ball. Makes that film session fun for them, doesn't it? Makes the film session fun and a lot easier for the producer and the director to pull out clips for the season-ending highlight video. Absolutely. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Holding offense. So they say no to the penalty. The incompletion stands. It'll be second and 10. And what they want to do is go ahead and take those downs away from them. You never want to give extra snaps to any offense. That's how you get hurt. On second and 10, gone. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. It's the safety, Kirk Coleman, and to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line, that's where they'll take over. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent, and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. This is caught inside the 15, and they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. You have fun with this one, partner? I am. I mean, he's been fun to watch under center. We always talk about, you know, getting to the next level, right? When we see people get into the zone, this guy's in the master class right now. What a performance he's putting on, just carving them up. Four touchdown passes, carving them up is right. Seems like everything he throws is going to be a completion and going in the end zone. Gano out to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. Can they? I 